we thank God for today. So we are starting our teaching um, teachings today quite early, and then afterwards, after we would mount up um, <laughs> for the Victoria. Okay, so let's just let me just pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are teaching through me, Father, anoint my lips, speak through me, let your words stay in people, and let the grace needed to walk in boldness come upon all of us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, thanksgiving, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So today we are looking at bold as a liar. And so we are looking at boldness let's see and um coming to you know when i was i had to teach i i, I was thinking about boldness 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 and i'm like what will i say about boldness because personally i i find it a bit um say is it maybe difficult sometimes and somebody wants like hide but here I am, I am to, you know, speak. So I would speak from about it from a place of prayer. And that's where I get boldness from. In every situation I find myself, to be able to speak out, to be able to come here, to be able to do anything at all, it's from a point of prayer. And for me, with everything has to do with prayer, that's the where boldness comes from when it comes to say me. And so I would say boldness is an empowerment by the Holy Spirit and a conviction that you need to have. And as well, there is that agency that comes with it. And so in the book of in the in in Acts chapter number four, verse 31, it says, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. And so there's that tendency that every one of us had a bit of maybe fear when it comes to, let's say, moving in, to doing something or speaking to a large crowd or speaking to unknown people. It takes the empowerment of the Spirit of God to be able to do that. And from where I, I come from, like a perspective where I stand and where I'm saying, for me, boldness is coming from a point of prayer because I find myself in probably an environment where, yes, I grew up with men, but I tried to hide and shy because when I go back to sleep in my dreams, there are so many negative things I see in my dreams back then that I wake up with this and it makes me pull in because there's so much fear even in the world. So how was I able to overcome this? And it is all by what? Prayer. And so when I came to that realization that, look, if I want to really move on, or move to the level I am seeing others move or my peers moving, then I need to come to that point of praying. Yes, we all get prepared. Let's say you, you study your notes, you memorize them, so that probably if you have a speech, you can go excellent with it, boldly, confidently. But sometimes when you have these noise in your mind, if you do not pray, you will get there with all your preparedness and go blind. And so for me, boldness comes from a point of prayer. So everything about me, before I would approach or before I would come and stand back then, wherever, whether two, three, four people, I need to talk to God. I need to tell God to give me that confidence, God to give me that boldness to be able to speak or go and do what I have to do. Because there is that possibility, because look, there's there's so much noise that wants to pull me down. There's this strong force that wants to pull me down and do not want me to, you know what, move to that level that I have to move to. And so I always try to be in that place of prayer. 
so that whatever achievement is there for me to, I can achieve. And so we look at the book of Esther, Esther chapter number four, verse 15 to 16. And it says that, then Esther sits, send this reply to Mordecai, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat and or drink for three days, night or day, and I and my attendants will fast as you do when this is done. And I'll go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. This is what Esther said. When Mordecai came with a sackcloth to tell him her, her what has really gone on, what's, what Haman is planning to do. This is what the reply, because look, Esther couldn't just go to the king as Mordecai was asking to mediate these people. There's, she needed some kind of confidence from the Lord, some boldness from the Lord. Mordecai is asking this woman to mediate for God's people. That's a good thing. That's a good thing to do. She is willing to do, but there is a law that states that, look, you cannot come to the king unless the king summons you. And if you should do in the verse 11 of the scripture, it tells us the like what it says that, and all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extend the gold scepter to them and spares their life. And this is what Mordecai is asking Esther to do. She needs that confidence. She needs that boldness to step up there, regardless of what is going to happen, regardless of what is going to happen to, to her. And so she was, she asked for prayer. She decided that, look, let us all fast and pray. Let us rely on God because what you're asking me to do, it is life and death. And so she needed that, you know what, backing or confidence from the Lord. We all, one way or the other, probably have been there. And we have families that sometimes you need to step out for. You need to, you know, move and add something. And sometimes we are we are caught in, in maybe in the words we used or in some law. And we are asking ourselves, can I do it? Will I be able to do it? Will I succeed? And these are some of the things that draws us back. But whenever we rely on God for the boldness to be able to do it, just like Esther did, we realize that, look, yes, she was able to do it. If you, you know, if you read the story further, you can tell that, yes, she was able to approach the king and she was able to get the results that God wants it to be. She was able to do it. And what that favor that needed to be extended for her life to be spared, she was able to do it. And so I will say it once more for me, boldness. And I believe that for a lot of here of us here, boldness comes from a place of prayer for us. Because if you don't pray, or let's say you need something, or you are even going for an interview, or you are going for something and you, you step out there without that confidence in prayer, without that boldness from prayer, you, you begin to doubt. Because look, you're asking yourself, am I going to get it? But when you have prayed and there's so much peace, so much peace within you, you walk out there confidently. And that's exactly what Esther did. Because when, when you really read the story and you put yourself in, in um, Esther's position, she was a queen who knew the law because she has been taught for years. She knew the law. She knows what it is. So why would somebody ask her like, hey, go to the king and do this? Obviously, as humans, she will start thinking, 
what if I die? What if the king does not show me favor? What happens to me? And here she is torn between two people, herself and the people of God. And these people need her to have lives. So many lives depend on what she will do, just stepping out in that boldness. So many people needed that. And that's how come she was, you know, when she was able to, let the God give her that mind that look, let's gather in prayer. Let's fast and pray. And I know the Lord would intervene. And that is how Esther was able to save all those people that were looking at her, that their life depended on her. That is how Esther was able to save them. She decided to be bold through prayer. She decided to step out there. She didn't consider the life that she had. It was just her anyway. Somebody you see. That's for, for me, that's where my point, my prayer, like my boldness, or for any Christian, that's where boldness for me is not from. Another place I see boldness coming from is what's having spiritual sight and understanding. It's it gives you a lot of boldness. I don't know if you have experienced, maybe you have a dream life or you go through, let's say, um, trances, you go through um, visions, you have these things. It gives you an edge, it sets you above. And then you are able to walk confidently out there because you know what you have seen, you know what you have heard. And so when you are pursuing, you are pursuing with so much confidence. In, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 20, it tells us about the story of Mary and Joseph. And in the verse 19, he says what Joseph had wanted what had wanted to divorce her quietly because Mary had conceived. And she didn't, he didn't want to embarrass her. And so she, he just wanted to let her go. So there won't be any form of embarrassment. But look, the Spirit of God sent an angel. God, the angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. And we know what this angel of the Lord told Joseph. The angel of the Lord was asked him not to worry. I want you to read anyway. I don't know. He, he yeah, is, no, no, it's okay. No, yeah, okay. so yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Can you can you move um um it's from eight, like 20 to 24, no, like 18 to 24. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to, 20, 18 to 24. I want to read what the angel of the Lord said to Joseph. And that made him, you know, have that confidence and boldness to marry Mary and accept Jesus as his son. Because when you have not, let's say, um, married a woman, you've not had anything to do with this woman, and you live in a society where people know who you are, maybe you are a man of God, people know you fear God, and then suddenly you have a woman who is pregnant. And probably maybe she was pregnant before marriage. So in, in our life today, we might be counting the months and Jesus probably might be born before the ninth month. And so some people will be asking, hey, Joseph, what did you do? I don't know if you find yourself in that situation. What kind of boldness would you use in walking, walking among your peers as a man of God? 
as a marketplace minister who is preaching the word of God to so many people and then by by some way the woman you intend to marry all of a sudden shows up pregnant and you go ahead and marry this woman and you are telling the people I didn't sleep with her how do how how would you walk how where is the confidence coming from where is the boldness coming from but look because he had had a revelation he had had a dream that tells him like look this is from the holy spirit and so take her marry her accept that son and because he believed that conviction was there he accepted and married mary and what had accepted the son as well if you could imagine yourself in that situation i don't know how it's going to be holding your head high confidently walking around people obviously people will be pointing at you but you know you heard something you have seen something and so you will keep going in that boldness so for me revelation dreams visions gives us so much boldness and i will encourage us to you know find ourselves if it has to take us to pray to you know get their gifts from god and we must not play with them when you read the chapter 2 of matthew the 13 the chapter 30 when you know jesus was born pharaoh wanted to kill jesus after he got to know that look a son a king has been born pharaoh decided like look he's going to kill that boy even before he grows up and so once again the angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream he said get up take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. This was specific instructions given to Joseph. It gives him, him an edge over the enemy. And when you read further, the, I think the verse 14, he says, what well, he took up, he took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. This is a newborn baby. This is a fresh mother who needed care. But there is that need, that agency to leave. And so the people, I believe, in that neighborhood will say, ah, Joseph, where are you taking your wife and child to? That's a fresh baby. That's a fresh mother who needs care. And it was in the night. You and I today, if there's a nurse here or the pharmacist or the medical doctors who tell us that, look, it's cold out there. Don't take your child out there. These are valid points, yes. It's cold out there. It's not good for the child to be in the cold. It's at night, there might be so much danger out there. But the man has heard something. And so he had confidence in the Lord. There was that boldness to step out at night with all the danger, with all the cold, with whatever would happen. He knows his head from the Lord. And so he's going to pursue. He's going to move. And it has that agency is there. Because if he should wait, you never know what would have happened. Pharaoh might have got caught up with them. And maybe you and I would never have been saved. But he, he obeyed that word confidently, boldly he stepped out. And I can say so many, so many revelations in the Bible that gave people the edge, that gave people confident boldness. If you look at Genesis 41, when Pharaoh had a dream about the seven years of famine and seven years of harvest, and with understanding he got from Joseph. Look, at that time of famine, I'm sure the other people around, the other kings around, when the famine started, would keep saying, hey, it's getting difficult. Hey, 
things are not coming. The, the, the farms are getting dry. But look, Pharaoh and probably Joseph might be living like normal because they have seen, they have prepared, they have done what they have to do. And so even, even in as much as people are suffering all around them, confidently they are okay. Boldly they are walking around as if nothing happened. Because once upon a time there was a revelation. Once upon a time there was that, that dream with a meaning that put them on that edge to you know, prepare towards the famine. And so even though people are trying to hide and, you know, try and save themselves from the farming, there seems nothing wrong because they are already prepared and even prepared to the extent of what? Giving to others. So I see boldness in having spiritual sight. I have encountered, I have had dreams that maybe the enemy wants to attack or even I have seen a vision that the enemy wants to attack. And sometimes because one have prayed for a long time, because the scriptures are in you, when the enemy attack in your dreams, in your visions, there is your spirit speak out boldly with that agency because you are speaking from what is within you that's that, that scriptures that long prayer would speak out for you boldly and then you have the enemy going or getting lost i remember one time i, I was praying with somebody and in a vision i saw the the the, the enemy's hand and i was telling it was scary trust me when i saw it on the physical like a vision and i was telling the person i was praying is like i've seen an evil hand because i saw the hand like hand and i prayed and i went to sleep and it showed up in my room but because there was there was pray i mean we prayed and the scripture look i don't know the spirit my spirit or the spirit of God, you know, the spirit in me just spoke out enough. And I, I look, it wasn't in the script, I just said enough. And with that boldness, that anger in my spirit, it just it just went off. So I believe that when we have spiritual sight, saying dreams, like I've said, visions, trances. It, it just puts you on the, it just gives you some level of confidence. It just gives you boldness because you know what is going on around you. you. You are not just there. You are not blind, like you don't see anything. You know, if you have children, God is going to reveal what is going on, going on around them. If they're in your marriage, in your, in your economic life, whatever it is, you will see that there will be a revelation. Even if you are having new, let's say, grace, it would show up in your, there will be confirmation. And so you walk with some level of boldness and you know what you, you can do and you know how far you can go without looking at the people around you. That's, 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 that's for me, it's, it's, for me, I, I, I really enjoy that part of boldness, I must tell you, because we live in a spiritual world and there are so many things that are happening around us. And so if you don't have the sight to see some of the things that goes around, sometimes it becomes very difficult for you because probably you have to go and see a prophet somewhere or probably, yes, they are good, but there is that need, at least some dreams, at least some visions, some trances. It just gives you some level of boldness to step out there, to walk there. Because sometimes, even when you're going to meet a business partner, there is a revelation already into the business. And so you walk in confidently. So 
sometimes you go to hospitals and surgeries and other things because we we are we are in tune with the spirit of god there are revelation that tells you this surgery is going to be successful this is what is going to happen sometimes it's bad and you you rise in prayer and pray against it and when people are speaking you are cool you are quiet you are so you know there's some level of confidence there's that boldness because you know what you've seen you know what you have done they have no idea so for me spiritual side spiritual that it it gives me so much confidence i must say and i would encourage each on every one of us look we need to go into prayer to have these sides if they are gifts given unto us one man of god said that look the enemy attacks those that are like they have sides because they can tell what is going around and they can fight them back and so you don't want to just be there and be um a, let's say an, a nominal christian and just walk around and then you don't hear from god at all you don't have anything at all so you, you just leave i urge you to pray at least be you you need to hear what god says about every situation what is around you even if you are not having dreams you could ask god how is so so and so doing and god will speak to you about this and it, it gives you some level of confidence it gives you some boldness and so moving on i just want to speak on some of the things that when we go through you know let's say fear has taken over you most times you 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 feel rejected and so that boldness is not there to take up what you have to take i'm speaking like from an individual point of view and one of the things you realize is as an individual there are promises of god that keeps us going that's the word of god the word of god has always been there for us but there are some that you and i sometimes take this personal and you see this is the word that you know keeps you going for instance you find yourself in dark places you don't know where boldness would come from but there's that word in Psalm 91 that says for he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty and so you want to find your place in that secret place and that's where you find your strength that's where you find that boldness life is a struggle and each time we have to win but we cannot just win by staying in our various corners we need to speak out and some of the ways we can speak out or come out bold is through the word of god is through the promises of god for me for instance there are scriptures that have kept me all few it, i mean all few even when it is it looks like it's not possible i just say to myself it is possible because i believe in a god that is a god of possibility i did i just don't want to like um say okay i accept things as they were ah uh ah -uh. no i don't easily accept things as they are i just always have that faith in god that look he's going to do it for me and so i step out with that boldness that confidence that my god is a god of possibility the mountains that that cannot be moved they can be moved by faith and so there have always been you know let's say challenges in life from let's say like madam akudo was saying we have the family we have the economic challenges and all these challenges come 
And the Bible says it's what by faith we can move these mountains when we say it. And that's how we we walk in boldness. Because yes, that there's that fear. There's that struggle of can I make it? Can I do it? Will I succeed? It's always in our mind. The devil is always dropping it. But how then do you succeed? There are so much, so many promises in the word of God for you and I. And so I've always said in Ephesians 3.20, for me, like these are very simple scriptures, which I believe everybody knows it. And without anything, I just say it. When it is so difficult, I say, I know my God will do it. He's the God of possibility. He, you know, he will do exceedingly abundantly more than I know. And I walk in that word confidently, boldly. And with that faith, with that belief, look, miracles do happen. Sometimes I do not even know where it is coming from on a human part. But because I have so much confidence and I believe that this word is going to work it for me, I just say it as it is. Sometimes I don't add words to it. I just speak the words as it is. That is what the word of God says. And it's going to work for me. And I have kept it that way. Look, I could say up to today. I have kept it that way. There are so many of them. There's, you know, there are signs like you even want to go and probably do a business or start a business and you are wondering how, how can I start? Where is that boldness to start? Sometimes, yes, there are resources you need to start, but where, how can I start? There, they, they, you don't even have anybody, not to talk about finance. Your reliance is on God. And you say Psalm 121, he says, where cometh my, where does my help come from? My help cometh from the Lord. And you want to step out with that word in mind, with that word that I can get the help I am getting. I will get it. And I believe a lot of us can share stories. A lot of us can share testimonies about stepping out without with nothing but trusting in the lord for it and it happens because we just took a bold step that's all you need to do you had faith in the lord and you decided to take take that step out there and it worked for you For, for me, I just want to speak from that personal point of view because look, these are some of the things that keeps us in our corners. That doesn't make us step out boldly is, you know, most of the time on the mind because there has been a bit of rejection here. There have been a bit of loneliness there. There's a bit of depression there that is keeping you in the corner. The enemy is eating in that. And pushing you deeper into your corner. When God needs you to step out boldly, when God needs you to, you know, that boldness that will, you know, when you step out there, there'll be a change not only in your life, but the people around you. Because when, when you're able to go through that, let's say you move from that kind of depression rejection the loneliness phase and you step out boldly and the people see you maybe they know you've gone through trauma they know you've gone through issues and they see you boldly come into the midst of people oh they say that woman is strong that person is strong that's where you have to find your yourself and most of these things depends on the word of God, the promises of God, the sounds of God, songs. It takes us away from that place of 
of rejection, that place of depression, that place of loneliness, and it moves us into the boldness to step out. It takes so much boldness for anyone in in the circles of rejection, in the circles of depression, to say no more. I'm stepping out boldly. I'm a child of God. God loves me. And step out among the people and fight for the future. It takes that boldness. That boldness our God is asking us to. And it's, you know, it's it just doesn't come. Like I've said, I, I read in Acts, it takes the spirit of God. It takes the empowerment of the spirit of God to be able to step out bold. I know a lot of people that have gone through, you know, issues, like I'm saying, and some find themselves in that corner and pass on or have even mental issues. But with the confidence we have in God and the word of God and the hymns, some of the songs, the inspirational songs we hear, it grants us the boldness to step out to life, to step out to success. Because there's a word that says what, if only you could by faith say, it, it shall happen for you. And so, I don't know, but that's where the Spirit of God, you know, that's the point the Spirit of God directed me to, from an individual point of view, how to step out boldly. The word of God is there for us, especially the promises of God for us. There are times there are financial difficulties you cannot do anything about. But God, the word of God says you supply every need of yours and you're holding on to that word confidently. Sometimes people might be even saying things, but you know your God will supply that need. You are so confident of it. That's from that point that point and so moving on one thing I also want to speak about boldness is that being bold is not a stand alone concept from the from the time I started I said it's the spirit of God that empowered I've said God gave visions and so it's not a stand-alone concept. You need, sometimes you just need somebody to say, you can do it. You need somebody to say, move there. You can open that business. You need somebody to say, you can start that community. That's why the word of God says in Colossians chapter four, verse six, it says, let your conversation be always filled with grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Because that word you are about to say can just boost somebody's confidence, can just give somebody boldness to step up, to open a whole company, to, you know, to save a whole community just one word and so you don't want to speak anyhow or mis, you know play around with words especially as a leader especially as somebody who you find yourself leading a community or among people or as a marketplace minister you don't want to find yourself like yeah I'm I'm you just don't want to say you want to say anything at all no but you want your words to be seasoned so that that word you are saying can push up somebody out there can make somebody move on they are worse and these people are the people just around us just the people around us our friends our family members 
the people we call the people in the community just one word changes so much for somebody and so you want to bring yourself to you know that's that's line and you don't want to like bring people down you want to always be that positive power person to say what the word is saying what god is saying for somebody just to put somebody there just to push somebody ahead just to give somebody that confidence that boldness and through you know some of these things we do there is success from let's say the family's point of view the individual point of view there's that boldness to step out there to do more for the lord and so today i want to you know i came to just let's say push us from that individual point of view to do what we are being called to do is it through prayer for me i believe in the prayer and i believe in this in the you know the sides because it goes to a point that look when we call for prophetic service i i hardly would go because what i know god will tell me what is happening around and that gives me so much confidence so much boldness so i want to end here so that we can continue in prayer And so friends, I want us to pray that our eyes will be open that we will see deeper things that will grant us that air, that will grant us that boldness in the things we do. Because that that really you know grants us so much grace. That boldness to walk walk you know have the spiritual side to walk in do what is right especially when you're having confirmation telling you okay this is what the lord is saying about you you confidently walk in it you confidently go and do it so if you are here from that individual point of view i just want us to pray and ask that who have sight to see what the lord has for us so that we'll be able to walk confidently in the things of god in the will of god for us what the plans of god for are for are, are for us we don't just want to live like normal like there's nothing happening in our life we want to walk in the will we want to understand the things of the spirit when you are able to understand these things you will go far that's so much boldness trust me that is so much boldness dreams visions there's so much boldness that comes from that point it can you know it can make you do anything because look you know that is what the word of god is for you that is what god is saying and so you you are like 100% sure what you are doing and so that boldness is so high and so you want to unmute and just you know begin to ask the lord for you know to give you that sign that's empowerment to that sight to see the things around you to know what is going on around you i know a lot of us have dreams and visions and you know a lot of us are prophetic we want to unmute and ask for deeper revelations deeper deeper sights things that you can see to just put you above to just give you that confidence that edge 
even among your peers, even among your society. Because sometimes you, you come from families where there's so much going on. So much. So much, let's say, evil spiritual stuff going on. But being a gatekeeper or being, let's say, market place minister, God has, you know, let's say, set you aside. And so you are moving on. Because well, there is that vision, there is that sight. And you know what you are about doing. And through you, many can follow in that, in that confidence, in that boldness. For me, I, I, am, I, am, I am coming from that point where spiritually it's, it's, it's tough. That's why for me, the spiritual side is very important. Because as much as you want to climb up in boldness, or oh, there are so many things pulling you down. And so that sight to see what is going on is so very important. So much important. And so I want us to, you know, ask the Lord to open our eyes to see the things around us so that we can walk confidently. Just like Joseph picked up the baby and the mother in the cold, in that night, because there was a vision, there was a dream. And so I want us to, you know, and means if you can, and ask the Lord, Father, just open my eyes. Open my eyes to see the things around me. God me that vision. Bible says, well, in the last day, he will, he will pour onto us his spirit. To those that will see visions and have dreams. And so together, I want us to pray this prayer. And say, Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see the things around me. To give me an edge above the enemy. Open my eyes to see what is happening, what will happen in the future. Sometimes even in the past. Because yes, they are, they are you mean, in our individual homes. Sometimes in our marriages. Look, there's so much confusion going on there. And you are struggling in the spirit. But when you have sight, God can give you a vision of what has happened or what is happening in your dream. And instead of maybe quarreling, instead of fighting, you are walking about boldly, confidently, because look, you know something that nobody knows. You know something that the people that are fighting have no idea of, and you know how to navigate through it. As I want us to, you know, pray for the sight. Let's let's lift our prayer right now. If you can join me, just lift our prayer. Just begin to speak in the language of the spirits and ask the Lord to give you sight. Say, Father, open my eyes. Let me see the future. Let me see what is happening. Even those that have to see way far back in the past, that which is happening around me, my family. When you, when you have that, I don't know, but there's so much confidence from that. And so if you can unmute, I mean, we'll be moving on to Mount Up soon. So if you can unmute, you can just begin to speak in the language of the Spirit. And just speak Lihidikis, the Tayyid, the Burakani, the Tayyid, the Mother, 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 the M
Mande kiss of Bendy Mamma Gasa Domonoko, so Bendy Mamba. Father Grant, John Day, the Borakotani Cosca, to ye the Polycotai Cascaya, who Lord I pray for something in the name of Jesus for eyes that see, yes, and he heard that understands in the name of Jesus upon my eyes, my God. Bakira Batana Muscataya, the Borakotani Cosca, to ye the Polycotani Mosca, ye the Borakotani Cosca, to ye the Polycotani Cosca, Man, I want us to pray. I want us to pray prayer point number six. It says, it says, well, we reverse every force of the enemy that is fashioned to instill fear and worry in us. As, as as individuals, some of the things I said as well, like the enemy is always there to, you know, play on the mind, play on the mind. For instance, if you look at the story of Esther, look, if, if it hadn't been the prayer and the fasting and he was just concentrating on, let's, let's say, herself, then even, even in that prayer, the, the enemy is always there to, to, you know, to instill fear. Like, what if I die? This is against the law. And so he's, he's going to put it in you. And so that you might not be able to do what you are, want, what God wants you to do. So sometimes in that fear, you just want to call in 
and say whatever will happen should happen. We don't want to find ourselves in that place where, look, the, the fear of the enemy has engulfed so much around you that you don't want to move ahead. Yes, it is true that yes, the, there is a law that says whoever comes to, 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 to the king without being summoned, killed. But when you have confidence in the Lord, some of these voices, you will shut them down. You, 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 you wouldn't even listen to them because you have a God that protects. You have a God that can show favor. You have a God that can intervene when the need is. And so all that the Lord needs you is what? Shut the enemy and just move up in, in that confidence. And in Isaiah 45, verse 2, it says, so I'll go before you and level the mountains. That's what the Lord God says. He says, you go before us and level that mountain. That's which seems very difficult. That's which you, you cannot phantom in your mind if you can do it. Because look, for Esther, it was life and death. That's literally what it means. But there's that word that says what the Lord says, what well, he'll go before her. And so she had that confidence. She had that boldness that my God will intervene for her. And that's how come she gained favor. And someone has to pray this prayer point from the uh, prayer point number six, which says, we reverse every force of the enemy that is functioning to instill fear and worry in us. The fear cuts across everywhere there is fear. In the family, there is the fear of not being able to do this. If What if I go and do this, what will happen? There is that fear in our economy, in our finances, everywhere, even investments. Sometimes the investments are so good, even when you, when you want to invest, the enemy is saying, hey, what if you lose your money? But we need that boldness to be successful. We need that boldness to move from one level to the other level. Without that boldness, without that confidence in God, that God can do it all for me, that the Lord will level the mountains. You are likely to stay in your corner and probably perish. Perish means so many things and you and I understand it very well. And so lastly, I just want us to pray that every, 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 every force of the enemy that is functioning to instill fear and worry in us, the Lord says he's going before us to level it. And so I want us to once more unmute and see that any, any enemy, any force of fear, whatever fear it is in you right now, whatever is making you scared, you want to speak it out and say, my God is leveling it. I am moving forward. I am going for this thing. I am going for that business. I am going for that community. I am going to save these people because the Lord is with me and says we should not fear because he will always be with us. And so once more, I want us to unmute and pray this prayer, unmute and ask that any force that is functioning against and you know, implanting, instilling, instilling into you fear. You want to take it out of your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just unmute and pray that anything like fear that is coming from the enemy be taken off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's just begin to pray right now in Jesus' name. Manda casa don mono co so vendere mamba mande che so vendere mamba na casa don mono co so vendere mamba mande che so vendere mamba yeah manda casa don mono co so vendere mamba mande che so vendere mamba manda casa don mono co so vendere mamba yeah manda casa don mono co so vendere mamba in the mighty name of 
Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Father, thank you for your work. Let us come to your people. Thank you for using me. Thank you for staring at people. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen.